All right, well, welcome everybody out to the WASD release for the month of November. I'm usually a month behind. I usually say October, Cody. And uh, speaking of Cody, I'm joined with Cody Gerlock from Bar Chart. Cody and I kind of go way back in the grain business uh, a few years. He's had time a little bit every place, Cody. Um, you, you come from New Jersey, but you, you're a Texas transplant, a Louisiana transplant, and now an Iowa transplant. You've you've seen a lot of things in your in your years in the grain business, haven't you? Yeah, I uh, moved around quite a bit. Uh, worked for uh, the same large grain company that Brooks did for quite a while, uh, and got to work with him uh, quite frequently at farmer meetings uh, throughout the years. And then uh, two years ago, left CG Boy, CGB and joined Bar Chart, uh, and based here out of Des Moines, Iowa. We got my wife back closer to her family, so uh, we're excited to be here in Iowa. And it was definitely uh, quite the year for uh, Iowa corn and soybeans. That's for sure. So we're, we're about 12 and a half minutes away from this November release. Um, and you can see we've got markets ticking right now. Corn showing some strength. These are as good of numbers as we've seen in a while. Now there's some heavy resistance right around that 430, 431 number on December. If you can see my cursor. Um, and there are quite a bit of farmers taking advantage of this number right now. Lots of private firms out there suggesting sales uh, be made here, at least the beginning of sales yesterday uh, on our action indicators. And if you remember, those are the, the indicators we look at in the marketplace to say, Mr. Farmer, the environment is historically right to make sales. We've got four of those indicators. Now, before I get too excited about selling here, we got to only, we got to realize only one of those triggered and Cody, this may be kind of new to you. We look at stochastics. We look at profitability. We look at um, where the, the speculative funds are at, and we look at RSI. And that RSI, that relative strength index, is the number that has triggered. Uh, we look at a 14-day moving average on that. And yesterday, we were right around 62. 60 is our threshold. Uh, I'll do my best to kind of illustrate what RSI is. It is a momentum indicator. And basically, it goes from zero to 100. When you don't have much momentum in the market, uh, you're closer to zero. When you've got phenomenal momentum in the market, you're closer to 100. A great example might be uh, the, the Dow Industrial Average. Uh, up there around 43,000, strong momentum hitting up in the 90s. Grains, on the other hand, you know, we've really hit a low. We've been between 25 and 40 for a long time. And this is the first time we've hit up there above 60 on corn in a long while. So uh, there are some people taking advantage of this. Cody, we were talking about basis levels across the country, and that's one thing. We've got folks on here dispersed from North Dakota to Louisiana that watch this. Um, tell us a little bit about, you're seeing some strength in these bases. You mentioned that. What are some of the factors in that? Yeah, so, you know, it's really seeing strength on the river market. Uh, that's where a lot of the strength, I think, is coming from. We've continued to see very strong export sales uh, out of the Gulf and the P&W here over the last few weeks. And uh, I think one thing I was mentioning to Brooks here right before the call, you know, on especially on the corn side, our cumulative sales pace uh, is running about 50% ahead of where we were last year. Um, so I definitely think that is one of the main drivers for what we're seeing here, the strength that we're seeing. You know, I was just showing him uh, before the call that basis in St. Louis, which is a very heavy uh, river market that goes to the export uh, channels. Uh, that is a like a 30 over-ish number for the JFM timeframe, which is pretty strong historically, especially for this time of year, to be showing that much strength out in those basis numbers. So if you're looking from a from a cash sale perspective, um, that puts you in that 475 range for uh, JFM corn into St. Louis. So a lot of strength there as we get into some more of the outlying areas. You know, one of the people on the call here today mentioned that there's still 75, 80 under for basis up in the North Dakota, South Dakota area. You know, I think that's just a function of transportation and transportation cost and trying to get that to uh, the appropriate markets. Uh, we're not seeing as much strength out of the Hereford, Texas market, which is a big cattle feeding market. Uh, so I really think the 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 closer you are to an export channel, uh, the better basis values you're going to see currently. You know, kind of looking at the beans, I think beans are um, are trading fairly optimistically pre-report right now. And um, I think, there were, again, 
We saw RSI almost make that 60 level yesterday. I believe we were around 58 and had that big rally up in the 20, 22 range yesterday, uh, which was a surprise because if you remember on election night, um, we saw that market really fall apart. It had recovered by Wednesday at the close and yesterday was strong. A lot of farmers decided to, to make some sales here. We don't like these levels at all. But beans have got a beans have been, we've got a pile of beans, and um, we could be potentially looking at record supplies when we look at world supplies. Weather is pretty decent down in South America. There's a long way to go, and you know you got to be you got to be fairly bullish acres next year on on beans. So these beans we need to take a look at. The problem we've got, Cody, in both corn and beans is we've got a big supply, and so. While we talk about, um, you know, maybe we add 100 million exports, maybe that's optimistic. We don't really have any private analysts saying we're going to increase that much. Maybe um, we take soybeans up a tick. Um, basically, that's going to be anything that we fall short of down in South America. Probably not any new demand there, but we fill the gap with what South America may not produce, which that's going to be a while before we know. Even if we have those numbers come in and cut supplies, we're still looking at some some pretty big carryouts going into next year. Yeah, I think one thing I I was reading some tweets earlier, and one of the tweets that I read was uh, talking about the carryout, and this is re in relation to corn. But last year at this time, uh, we had a smaller carryout projected number, and 380 corn these corn futures. Um, so I, and we've got a higher projected carry out number this year at this time frame, and we're trading 430 ish, 440 uh, on decent mark futures. So I, I definitely think, you know, maybe some of this is a little bit of fun money, uh, like the funds actually in the market using grains as some sort of an inflation hedge as well. I think that might be, you know, one of the other factors keeping this, this corn and soybean market inflated where we're at currently. Yeah, you, you hate to think of a 431 and a half D's as being inflated, but when you look at it versus stocks to use ratio, it, it's a little bit high. Now, we talked about this over the last last report. Is um, you know we're we're set in today at record yields on corn and beans on a per acre basis across the country. Um, we can have slight reductions to that and still have record yields. So we're going to see what happens. I can tell you this, as we talk to agents and farmers across the country, and this is certainly not objective and not scientific, it does seem as if the last one third of the bean harvest, we, we suffered some yield loss. Now it was phenomenal in some places, the first half of the crop, but the last one third, those later planted beans, and not a surprise, if you looked at those drought maps back in August and September, we had a lot of D1 drought creeping into to Cody, some of your areas up in there. Uh, reports out of you know Minnesota of beans that usually were 50 bushel the acre, we're down in the 30s. Um, so you know I think it's likely that we make a small cut on the the bean yield across the country. Corn, I don't really have an opinion on corn. Corn was pretty solid early on. Cody, what's your what's your vibe on the corn yield? I think I think we uh, could see maybe a slight reduction in corn yield, but I don't think it's going to be too significant. Um, there was definitely the last uh, last little bit of corn getting harvested. You know, we saw corn dry down extremely fast. Same thing with soybeans in this country was that they both dried down extremely fast, and the farmer was kind of chasing their tail to keep up uh, with what was in the field. So we might see a little bit of reduction, uh, but I don't think we're going to see an awful lot. I, I don't know if you heard this, Brooks. Uh, this is just some anecdotal, but uh, definitely heard some farmers that were cutting soybeans in, in the moisture range of six percent soybeans over in Nebraska, which I had never seen soybeans get that low. Have you have you seen that or heard that at all? You know, I haven't, but I can tell you that in the in most of the I states, you know, there were a lot of nine, ten percent beans being harvested there at the end, and that in and of itself is, is a yield reduction. Test weight's a little lighter, um, so you know, it it takes more uh, more beans to make that sixty that sixty pound bushel out there. So that in and of itself could take yields down half a half a bushel per acre um, by just quality standards. 
Yeah, I definitely think there's some of that around, especially the further west you go. Uh, Illinois, you get into Iowa, move west into Nebraska. I definitely think there's going to be some of that that we see towards the tail end of harvest. So that could definitely affect yield for sure. So, Cody, I think we would be remiss if we didn't uh, we didn't talk about election results and, and some things going on headlines today. Of course, you know, if you were if you were following the election and the markets together, um, you saw that popular vote down in North Carolina when it when it looked favorable for Trump, you saw beans drop about nine cents. And then when you saw Georgia kind of tag along, you saw beans drop another six cents. And at that point in time, we were down 15. When you started to hear about, you know, what We might need to give Brooks just a second. His Starlink sometimes messes up, so he's probably lost internet. I'm I'm back for sorry. It does this occasionally on me. <laughs> out. Uh, I'm I'm always back. The the market is a little sensitive. To, to Trump's foreign policy. Now, um, a lot of folks in, well, who we think will be in his administration today, you know, making some statements that hopefully, you know, this is leverage that can be used on um, at his foreign policy and it doesn't come to fruition. Uh, time will tell. But, you know, wheat, for instance, you know, I think a lot of people see Trump as a stabilizing force over in the Black Sea in the Middle East where, you know, we had some we had some optimism in wheat. About twenty two percent of the world's wheat, you know, comes directly from that area, and um, wheat futures really haven't done much uh, since the election. And really, really, we've kind of shrugged off all of that in, in the last uh, in the last couple of days. So hopefully, we have a normal trading market without politics interfering here. Yeah, I agree. It's going to be a interesting next few months to see one who his appointments are. Um, I think that'll be really interesting and really telling on how this presidency could be different than his last term. Um, I think that's going to be a really interesting thing to watch over the next few weeks and months as he starts to release and the names of who his appointments are going to be. I think that's going to be a, a big driver too. You know, some of the, I uh, mean, we're about, it uh, looks like we're about a minute and 15 seconds away from release. And what we're going to do upon release, we're going to leave the, we're going to leave the trade screen up and see how prices react. Cody is going to basically give us a rundown of, of how things come out. Um, just to, so we can, we can hear the report and we can see the reaction on the screen. There was some commentary this morning, you know, on the politics side about you know, Trump's climate policies. And uh, the one thing that farmers have are starting to adapt to slowly is, you know, we grow corn, we grow beans, we grow wheat. Those are our commodities we produce. You know, environmental incentives all of a sudden have become pretty important to cash flows and gross revenue. So it'll be really, really interesting to see if those are, you know, if we maintain that momentum, if they're cut a little bit, um, it's something I think that, you know, we don't think about, we don't think about that being corn and beans and wheat, but it's something that can have a big impact on the farm. Yep. It'll definitely be interesting to see too, um, what, if anything gets rolled back from the inflation reduction act. There's been a lot of talk around SAF, uh, all the carbon pipelines. It's going to be interesting to see how all of that release. So Cody, we're seeing a big market here Corn initially. I saw it up 12 on beans. We've settled down a little bit. We're up four now on January. We're, we're gonna focus on this January option on beans. It's gonna have your biggest volume around 106,000 contracts traded. Picking up a little bit here, corn up pretty decent. Um, Cody, have you got any information coming out? Yeah, so it looks like they reduced the corn yield uh, down 0.7 bushels to 183.1. So pretty similar to what you and I were talking about right before uh, on soybeans. Um, they are the uh, same production is forecast at 4.5 billion bushels down 121 million on reduced yields. Um, a lot of that uh, production change is coming in Iowa, Illinois, and Minnesota. Um, they also 
lowered exports 25 million bushels to 1.8 billion. Um, and so that's taking the carry out down to 470 million bushels from 500 projected. So um, they did drop carry out a little bit. They did drop yield a little bit on both commodities. Um, and it looks like that's what's got corn and soybeans fired up here a little bit. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, certainly something that's not a, uh, certainly something that is not a, uh, a bad thing for the market. Uh, we were a little bit scared that maybe the market might shrug this off. We would have these reductions and then, you know, the market continue to sell off. It's modest. The, what we're seeing is modest. Now you got to look at free report here. Beans have been the big gainer, um, you know, up 10. We were down four prior to the report. So a 14 cent net gain. Let's take a look at wheat. Uh, wheat's yawning right now. We've got December uh, wheat in Chicago up three. Uh, the deferreds up three quarters of a cent. You see not much going on here in Kansas City. Pretty quiet. Uh, it's going to be a challenge to maintain this. Um, to maintain this, I think, through the day. I think we're going to see a lot of hedge pressure from farmers. But you can see beans. That's a big change in the carryout. Uh, go over that carryout number again with us, uh, Cody, as far as where beans are going to land. Yeah, so soybeans, um, they reduce yield, uh, lower production, lower exports, crush, and ending stocks. Uh, and so they reduced soybean ending stocks, 80 million bushels to 470 million bushels. 470 million. Um, I think that is uh, going to sustain us for a while. Again, the big picture um, is still lots of beans in the world, lots of beans out there before we can get back to, you know, before we can get back to those levels of, you know, 11 plus, we're going to have to see additional cuts on there. And that's what's going to be tough. We may be at this, I don't know what you want to call it, low watermark on the supply. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what December has in store for us. But certainly, uh, I think a pleasant surprise for a, a November report. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely, uh, you definitely don't normally see this much of a market reaction out of the November report. Um, I think they cut, it looks like they cut a little bit more than analysts were expecting on the corn market. Uh, the average guest was uh, forecast for a 1,945 million. Uh, this is on the world side for corn ending stocks. Um, and it came in at 1938. Um, so I think that's uh, our 1.938 uh, billion. So it definitely came in a little bit lower uh, than where the analysts were kind of expecting. So I think that's why you're seeing the market rally like we are right now too. Um, but it's it's pretty interesting on the wheat side. I don't think I talked about the wheat supplies and maybe this is kind of the reason why the wheat market is just kind of yawning this report off, but they actually uh, increased supplies uh, and ending stocks on wheat up slightly. Um, so I think that might be why the wheat market's kind of yawning this off while soybeans and corn are off to the races. Yeah. Well, let's hope that we can maintain the momentum through um, through the close here. It, 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 I think it's going to be a challenge. I think you're going to see a fair amount of farmer selling and commercial hedging. Um, we'll see what happens. Beans, maybe a little muted response, in my opinion. If we were looking at 470 million from that from that trimming, um, I would have thought maybe we'd have gotten a little bit more kick out of it. We'll see how the day progresses. Yeah, it's um, it looks like uh, on the global side as well. For soybeans, um, they did lower uh, global soybean production three and a half million tons um, to 425 million tons uh, globally. Uh, and most of that lower production was coming from both US and then also India. Um, so a little bit surprising they mentioned India in there. Uh, and I think we mentioned this here before this call, but last week India was in buying uh, soybean oil from the United States for the first time in, in a few years. Uh, and last week's soybean oil export numbers were the best soybean export soybean oil export numbers in 12 years. So there might be a little bit of a story there from the soybean oil side uh, that could keep a bid underneath the soybean market as well. But like you mentioned, we still, even with that big drop or big cut uh, in U.S. supply that they mentioned here on this report, um, I still think that we still have carry out and supply to handle all the world's needs at least the way they look currently and while uh, while we turn to december was the and it will be important more importantly will be this weather in south america um uh, december 1 through through january 20 it's going to trump anything that uh, gets thrown at the soybean market from a fundamental standpoint 
Yeah, I was down uh, in Brazil about two months ago, uh, right before a couple of weeks before they started planting. Uh, and that was in that period of really dry, uh, dry weather uh, that they were having in Brazil. And that was kind of the last time we saw the soybean market run up a little bit, uh, right as beans were starting to get cut in the U.S. Uh, and right as they were getting ready to start planting in Brazil. And we saw a little run up in the bean market because there was no moisture in their ground down there. Um, but now they've got the soybeans planted and it seems like they've got at least for the next 30 days have pretty much ideal weather uh, and should be setting up for another month. Monster Brazilian crop too. So that's definitely something to be paying attention to here over the next few months. Uh oh, we lost Brooks again. His Starlink kicked out. We need to call Elon and tell him to get after it. Um, a couple other things uh, that I noticed here from this report as well um, on the coarse grain production. Um, it did look so they did drop the yield 0.7 bushels down to 183.1 and they did not change the uh, harvested acres so they left those alone at 82.7 uh, million acres so that's where they're coming up um, with their ending stocks um, they're down to 1.9 just just above 1.9 billion bushels on the carry out so definitely some interesting things going on there Cody, I appreciate your time. We won't keep anybody any longer than we need to. And um, I appreciate you joining us from Des Moines. Uh, always good to get your insight. Hopefully we can get you back on here in Awazi in the future. Sounds great. Appreciate you having me, Brooks. And uh, best of luck to all the producers here on the uh, on the call with your marketing. And uh, I know you uh, you listen to Brooks and he's got a lot of good things to say. So, so keep on and best of luck this fall or this fall and winter, I guess. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next month.